Hello there. Happy September. Eventually, it's going to be cooler where I live, but that hasn't happened yet. Welcome to a bonus episode, and thank you for being part of the Patreon. This week, I wanted to give you a couple of books that I'm super excited about. And we do this weekly. We talk about new releases on Smart Pitches every Tuesday. It's called Hide Your Wallet because that's what I have to do. And we also talk about books at the beginning of the month with Dahlia Adler. On the first Friday of every month, Dahlia does a roundup of queer romances that are coming out. And while I do mention books that I'm excited about, I wanted to give you a list of 10, just 10, that I'm really excited about for September because I also want to know what's on your shopping list and what you're reading. So here are some books that are coming out in September that I am super, super curious or have already read and am going to tell you that they're awesome. So first up is Home for the Holidays, book one in the Holidays Heart and Chutzpah series by Jennifer Wilk. I just, I just need a minute to appreciate how hard everyone involved went for it with the title. This could not be a better trap for me than Like if you had put the book under a box with a little stick and then like a little piece of chocolate next to it. Seriously, home for the holidays with holiday heart and chutzpah. I mean, seriously, I might give this to give this to my mother-in-law just to hear her talk about it. Um, My mother-in-law is from Sheep's Head Bay, Brooklyn, and she sounds like it. Anyway, so this is a Harlequin special edition. It is, if you're curious, 288 pages in print. And it is about a woman named Sarah who goes home for the high holidays and She is really not sure if she wants to marry her boyfriend. And the very last person she wants to talk to is her first love, Aaron, the one who broke her heart. But they uh, apparently have to join forces to fight an act of hate. So, hey, there might be some anti-Semitism in there. However, the people on the cover are adorable. The dress is perfect. It's Holiday's heart and chutzpah. Seriously, it's like they're just sort of dangling little Sarah trap bait out there. I love this. Next up... Stacey Abrams. Yes, Stacey Abrams. Writing as Selena Montgomery, The Art of Desire. If you have wanted to read a book by somebody who turned Georgia blue, this is your opportunity. Selena Montgomery, if you didn't know, is the pen name of Stacey Abrams, who is almost should have been the governor of Georgia. And her books as Selena Montgomery are mostly romantic suspense, but they're spicy romantic suspense. And The Art of Desire has a truly gorgeous close-up photograph cover of a woman with sunglasses on and you can sort of see the guy in the reflection, but it's very gold and pink. And, you know, the hero is inside a terrorist organization. He's trying to like be a normal person, but it's not going very well for him. So if you like suspense, that's coming out on September 5th. A future guest of the podcast. Wait, now I actually have to look at my spreadsheet. Did you know I have a spreadsheet? I have a spreadsheet. Yes, I do. Okay. Spreadsheet says Jennifer L. Armentrout will be on the show on September 15th. And this episode is for September 5th. So you have something to look forward to, including her upcoming book, the launch title for Bramble, Fall of Ruin and Wrath. And if you are thinking what I am thinking, yes, a noun of things and stuff. It's a noun of things of stuff, which means it's a fantasy novel. But I mean, you knew that because it was Bramble. This is the first book in the series that she's writing for them. It is one of the launch titles for the line. And the way it was pitched to me is touch her and die conflict. So if that is your jam, fall of ruin and wrath, which I keep wanting to call fall of wrath and ruin. But I think it's because I want the two A sounds to go together, the fall and the wrath. But you know, these things are not up to me. Coming out also on the 12th is a book called Witch of Wild Things, which fulfills, if you've listened to our bonus episode about cover predictions that Amanda and I did, this is things around the border that have to do with the plot plus potential filigree. Now, the filigree, is okay, it's kind of filigree, it's kind of mushroom stems, but it's got lots of cutesy stuff around the border. And it is about someone who has returned home to, you know, witchery things, witchy things, witch-tastic things. It is a witch book. It is also by, okay, I am not sure how to pronounce this. And I looked, usually when I'm not sure how to pronounce a name, I will go find them on YouTube or I will listen to the start of a sample of the audiobook and listen to the narrator and say the title and author. That helps me a lot because I assume that's been through some quality control. I can't do that here and my searching hasn't worked. So it is either Raquel Vasquez Gilliland or Raquel Vasquez Gilliland. 
but I'm because there's a double L and I'm not sure wh- which one was right, but I'm just going to say both. That way I have my, you know, I have my bases covered. The Witch of Wild Things is another, I returned home and I have to, you know, figure out who I am now that I've left and come back plus witchcraft. But there's also the fact that she is a plant witch. And I don't know why that just hits me right in my, oh, yes, please. I wish to read that. But plant witch, probably because I am not a plant witch. I mean, that's probably one of the major reasons. The next book I wish to tell you about is Nobleman's Guide to Seducing a Scoundrel by K.J. Charles. If you've read K.J. Charles, then you know it's a K.J. Charles novel. I don't have to say anything else. But if you haven't read K.J. Charles, I would say, because Laura and I have talked about this book at length, you want to read A Nobleman's Guide to Seducing a Scoundrel first. No, that's the second one. Jeez, why do you have to make titles so similar? Excuse me. Let's try this again. The Secret Lies of Country Gentlemen is book one in the Doomsday series. The Nobleman's Guide to Seducing a Scoundrel is book two. But these books take place like right after another. I don't think there's a name in publishing for that. Sequential, like super sequential, like next day, this book. So if you're going to be a little overwhelmed by shenanigans and casts of characters, and also if you really like K.J. Charles's writing, it's probably not a problem. But you want to start with book one, Secret Lives of Country Gentlemen, and then move right on into book two, and you will enjoy yourself very much. And that's out on September 19th, so you have a little bit of time. Next, I want to tell you about a book that you've already heard about. Aren't I so great? (laughs) Rachel Harrison's Black Sheep is also out on September 19th, and Agatha Andrews, who is the host of the She Wore Black podcast, was on my show recently. Am I going to check the spreadsheet and tell you exactly when? Yes. Yes, I am, because I have no concept of time whatsoever. Agatha was on episode number 572 on the 21st of July to talk about cons and horror books, and she loved this book. If you like taking familiar things like uh, fairy tales, that kind of thing, um, and you like making them horror Agatha adored this book. I am trying with great trepidation to read it because it will scare the poodle out of me, but it sounds so good. It is, again, about returning home to a family farm and a family that's kind of like a cult. You know, now that I think about it, I have read a lot of books where the heroine returns home to a small town and either doesn't fit or wants desperately to fit. It's a theme, right? Like, Why is that a theme? There's probably a lot of reasons why that's a theme. But either way, this is the horror version of that theme. And if you are thinking to yourself, gee, I wish Sarah would mention a historical. I have one for you. Erica Ridley, also a prior guest on the podcast, is continuing the Wild Winchester series. Book four comes out on the 12th and it is called My Rogue to Ruin. It is a cartoon cover. It does feature a border with plants and a cute little illustration of some people. But the thing about this series is that if you like over-the-top heists and a lot of capering and a lot of people who are really good at what they do, but set in a historical era in which they have to maintain some semblance of public propriety, you will like this very much. They are over the top. They are nonstop. They are very fun. And Shana, who writes for Smart Bitches, absolutely adores them. Speaking of writing for Smart Bitches, Dahlia Adler does our monthly queer romance roundup, as I mentioned, and she mentioned Cleet Cute by Meryl Wilsner. Now, if you like sports and if you like soccer and you're really kind of peeved about the whole Spanish World Cup team bullshit that they have to deal with, and you would like to read a happy story, well, this is about the U.S. women's national team and it's a lesbian romance. (laughs) The, The pitch line that I got for this a sapphic rivals to lovers rom-com for fans of Ted Lasso and a league of their own, where two soccer teammates are at odds before falling in love as their team gears up for the World Cup. Does that sound like your cup of tea? I bet it does. Someone is now pausing to go find this book. That comes out on September 19th. And if you haven't read Meryl Wilsner, they're so good at character. Their dialogue is hilarious. Their characters are wonderful. I cannot recommend Meryl Wilsner more. You will you will like this one a lot. I have two more. Are you ready? All right. 
The first one is probably not a shock. Beth O'Leary has a new book out on the 26th of September called The Wake Up Call. Now, Beth O'Leary wrote one of my most favorite books from a few years ago, The Flat Share. I read it in a day. It came out in May of 2019, which feels like a whole different era, a whole different period of time in the world. But the new book from Beth O'Leary, I didn't as much like the no-show and I didn't like the switch as much. The new one sounds like my jam, my coulis, my red wine reduction. It sounds exactly like my sauce. It is about two hotel receptionists who do not like each other, who find a collection of old wedding rings and then have to compete with with one another to return them to their owners. So it's part like quest, there's going to be snarky dialogue, there's two people at a hotel and the hotel is falling apart and it's Christmas and you know, things happen. I am have not read this one yet. I am very looking forward to it because it seems like the kind of dialogue and setup that is going to be exactly the things that I like. And finally, one last book to recommend, also a prior podcast guest. I didn't do that on purpose. The Fragile Threads of Power by V.E. Schwab comes out on the 26th and is, drum roll please, 656 pages. So if you have got some things that you would like to not do at the end of September, have I got the book for you. This is a new series called Threads of Power. It has got some scheming and some adventuring and some friends. And it is, it, it is just friggin' huge. It is just friggin' huge. And that sound that you hear behind me is Kate, who has decided it is time for a snack while I record. I really appreciate when she does that. Anyway, in addition to The Fragile Threads of Power being the first book in a series and being absolutely gigantic at 656 pages, I'm thinking I might recommend this to Adam because this is the first line of the description and it sounds like his jam. Once there were four worlds nestled like pages in a book, each pulsing with fantastical power and connected by a single city, London. So it sounds like magical world grounded in the world, like the actual world. Dun, dun, dun. Yep, I'm very curious. I am super curious. And I think I'm going to get Adam a copy. I'll pre-order it for him and say, hey, surprise, it's a book. Do you do that? Do you pre-order? I have to stop hitting my mic. Do you pre-order books for people and just let them show up? I do this all the time. Or if I get a book, I will like send it to a friend of mine digitally. And she'll be like, did you send me this? That's great. And I'm like, yeah, because that's what I do. I'm an expensive person to know. And this has probably been a slightly expensive episode. I am really curious though. Please tell me what books are you excited about this month? I love to hear about books that you have discovered because I don't know if you have noticed. There's a lot of books. Oh, hang on. I have one more. Holy crap. Did you know there's a new Sonali dev coming out? Would you like to have your heart slowly extracted through your chest? I mean... She's so good at that. (laughs) Lies in Other Love Languages is about three women who are dealing with the lies that they've told to make their lives seem safe when really there's some ugliness going on there and everyone has to confront their troubled history and there's a genetic study involved. You know, it's, you know, Sonali Dove. She's going to make you cry. But it's also going to be really super beautiful and feature gorgeous family and friendship relationships. Okay, now I'm done. Now I'm done being the most expensive person you know. Okay, probably not, but for now I am done. Thank you so much for being part of the podcast, Patreon. Please come find me on patreon.com where this episode is posted and tell me in the comments what books you're looking forward to reading. And Clay, specifically, I know you have placed a lot of orders for the library, so what's on your list? Hmm? Don't you hate being called out in a podcast episode? I hope that doesn't freak you out. I like saying hi to y'all, but if it freaks you out for me to do it by name, just let me know and I will stop. Either way, thank you so much for being part of the podcast Patreon. I hope you enjoyed this bonus episode. Now let's go read some things. <laughs>